Hello, my name is William from Two Twan. Wait. Oh. Oh, this is a different YouTube channel. <laughs> this is the National Ninja League. This is season six. This is Elite. Welcome to Ninja Lab. We're back! And we have a new division. It's the Elite Division. Here's how it works. Before competing in their first qualifier, every ninja age 15 up has a decision to make. They either compete in their age group, young adult, adult, or masters, or they choose to compete in the Elite Division, where only the top two qualifiers move on to the regional finals. And once they decide, they're locked in for the entire se season. There's no turning back. For Ninja Lab, we're going to be looking at the Elite Division, starting with the very first qualifier, Iron City Ninja. Yes, this course does start with a warped wall. But for the Elite Female Division, in second place was Rachel Bernson. Rachel was looking good at first, and even though she had a little bit of trouble on the spiky block area, but after completing Salt of the Earth, she got hung up on the inner circle when she was unable to transfer from the ring slider to the cannonball hold. But still, she officially qualifies for the Northeast Regional Final in the Elite Division. And in first place for the elite female division was Sophia Oster. Sophia had better luck on the blocks early on and was able to reach the inner circle faster than Rachel did. In fact, she was able to make it all the way to the paradigm shift, but when she made the transfer to the salmon ladder bar, her grip ultimately gave out and she went down on the course at that point. However, this earns her the maximum 10 points and allows her to qualify for the Northeast Regional. Yes! For the elite male division, in second place was Elijah Browning. Elijah was looking really good on the course early on, getting smoothly through the early obstacles like the inner circle, and he had a bit of a scary transfer on the paradigm shift, uh, salmon ladder section, but he was able to conquer that obstacle as well. In fact, he was only, only one of two people who was able to complete 10 of the 13 obstacles. However, on the 11th obstacle, when he was trying to climb the nunchuck hooks, he had grip ultimately gave out and he fell at that point of the course. And in first place for the elite male division on this very first elite course was Sam Folsom. Sam took on the course very quickly early on, but was met with adversity when one of his blocks got misplaced far from the uh, spikes. However, he was able to persevere and overcome that obstacle. And then it was smooth sailing through the rest of the course. He was able to get through the nunchuck holds, the only person to do so. And despite a slight confusion on the larger walked wall, he was able to complete all 13 obstacles and became the only person to complete the entire course and qualify for the Northeast Regional Final. Nice. 
Don't forget, go to nationalninja.com to see the full schedule of upcoming qualifiers and see if there are any near you. Now, let's look at the results of Austin Ninja's Cedar Park. For the elite female division, in second place was China Hart, who completed the Spinny Boy. In first place was Isabella Wakeham. Isabella was able to power through the early obstacles of this course, which quite frankly were pretty challenging, but this is elite after all. She was even able to make her way through the challenging cliffs. However, as she was getting ready to uh, transfer to the back snap, her grip ultimately gave out and she fell before being able to attempt the obstacle. She almost matched the men, but it's still good enough to earn her first place, 10 points, and a qualification for the South Central Regional. Come on, Bella. In first place for the adult male division was Nathan Haney. Nathan looked very good and was able to complete the back snap faster than any other male who completed that obstacle, which is good because that allowed him to earn first place and qualification for the regionals. However, on the course itself, the true sticking point turned out to be Texas. Literally, a hand grip shaped like Texas. And when confronted with that obstacle, unfortunately, Nathan was unable to maintain his grip and fell on the course. Ultimately, no one was able to make it past the seventh obstacle. A truly elite difficulty course. This is yours. And now it's time for the comment question of the week. What do you think of the new Elite Division? Personally, the best competitors competing for the best prizes? Sounds good to me. Now let's wrap things up with the results of Vitality Obstacle Fitness. This course has its own version of Walk the Plank, but for the Elite Female Division, in second place was Sophia Lavalie. Sophia just was doing really well on the course, I'd have to say. She had a close call on some of the steps, but she was able to navigate her way through the maze of skyhooks and was able to handle that high jump challenge that happened as well. But what was really key was her completing Watch Your Step, which was a wart wall with spinning steps as a run-up. That, that's just a cool idea for an obstacle. Unfortunately, when she took on the obstacle called this again, she was unable to make the transfer from the step to the second trapeze bar. So she unfortunately went down at that point and finished in second place, allowing her to qualify for the New England Regional Final. And in first place for the elite female division was Addie Herman. Addie gave quite a scare early on when she had a bit of a sketchy dismount on one of the obstacles, but she was able to recover quite quickly and was able to make up for time on the rest of the course. 
she completed Watch Your Step with a time of 1 minute and 25 seconds, which is key because Sophia completed that obstacle in 1 minute and 34 seconds. And Addy was fell on this again in the exact same spot that Sophia did. So, because Addy completed the obstacle faster, she got first place, 10 points in the league, and qualified for the New England Regional. Come on, Addy, let's go for it. For the elite male division, in second place was Jay Lewis. Jay was just moving very quickly on this course overall and was able to to take on many of the obstacles of this very interesting course. After completing this again, he took on some interesting obstacles, including going across some weights and hanging on them, a uh, drop-down uh, nunchuck obstacle called Geronimo, and plenty of other stuff, including uh, their own snapback, and the finale is a downward sloping salmon ladder, which Jay was able to complete and hit the finishing bell with authority with a time of three minutes and seven seconds. This is fast enough for Jay to qualify for the New England Regional Final. And in first place for the elite male division was Nolan LaJoy, proving that the older ninjas can still be the top elite amongst the brass. After watching Nolan's run, I'm convinced that he just did not stop for the first two thirds of this course. He just kept moving and flying through these obstacles. It was crazy to watch. I was so impressed. And then, when he was taking on the obstacle Diabolical, he made sure to do one hand over hand instead of doing laches. And then, he had a bit of a scary fall falling forward on the dismount of that obstacle, but thankfully, it's a padded up uh, course. He was okay, and he wasn't uh, falling out of bounds, so it was all good. And afterwards, he completed snapback and made his way down the final salmon ladder obstacle and hit that bell with authority, earning him first place with a time of 2 minutes and 50 seconds. That's 17 seconds faster than Jay. And he is in first place, 10 points, and qualification for the New England Regional. You earned it, man. Good job. Hey, thanks for watching the season premiere of Ninja Lab. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the National Ninja League and watch the individual runs of the qualifiers mentioned in this episode. See you next time. Later. Later.